Hey YouTube, it's the test lead. And today's video is how to test websites with the tool K6. If you're new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. I make content to help you on your QA and automation journey. Now back to the video. So first let's start with the installation process. Go to google.com and type in K6. Click the first link and go to their website. We want the free open source version, so let's click that. Next, select download and then find your operating system. They have Linux, they have Mac OS. I have Windows, so I'm gonna download the Windows installer. Once it's download, I'll execute the executable file and then run the full setup. Now let's open your terminal or your command prompt, depending on what OS you want. Go to search and type in CMD. Navigate to the path where your K6 is located at and type in K6 version. And also type in K6 help. This side know your K6 is properly set up. Now let's create a test folder to hold our test files. It doesn't matter where you create it, just know the path where you created it at. Now let's navigate to our website. I'm choosing AOL. For you younger people, you may not even know what this is, but this is a big platform. They should really handle the load that we give it. So you're gonna right click the page and go to inspect. This is called the developer tools. From here, go to the network tab and see all the traffic happening on the network. You are then gonna refresh the page. That way you see all the traffic. Right click the top option and then go to save all as hard with content and then save that hard file. Now we're gonna turn your HAR file into a test file. Type in your command line, K6 convert, then the path of your HAR file, then the arrow, then a new path of your test file, and then press enter. You will now have your new test file that has an array of calls, which were the requests made in your browser. Each virtual user will now use this as a batch request. By default, our test right now has one virtual user and will only load the page once. We pulled the rate that one user can go to the page without a problem, so let's make it more realistic now for testing purposes by adding the snippet into the options section. Now for our duration, we're gonna have 100 users hitting it for one minute, then 200 users for one minute, and the ramp down to zero. Our threshold is also gonna be that 90% of the requests finish in 3.5 seconds or less. We're also gonna comment out this top line about convert being deprecated. It still works, so we're gonna use it for now. So now let's run our test and see what happens. Type in K6 run, then a path to your test file. Now let's fast forward through the actual test run cycle so we're not just sitting here wasting time. Now let's analyze our results. As it says, some thresholds have failed. If we go to HTTP, Request duration, the average time was 5.25 seconds. We were looking for under 3.5 seconds, so of course this failed. Personally, I think that's pretty bad for request duration, but this isn't my website. For your website, set your own standards. So let's say you don't like viewing the results on the command line. You can export to a JSON or CSV file or stream to one of these services. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below. If you need help in your QA journey, check out my book, QA Must Know Terminology. And most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.